my show? Okay. Wakanda. I'm standing on what created Wakanda. Think about it. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mess with y'all too much, but I, you know, I just get hyped because when I'm on the, you know what I'm saying, burial ground of my ancestors, I guess the spirit come up in me, you know what I'm saying, the ancestral spirit come up in me, because I know I got African in my DNA. So, you know, I, I ain't like none of y'all off-brand niggas. <laughs> y'all, y'all off-brand niggas. I know a lot of y'all niggas indigenous now. I already know it. I, I understand it. You know, I, I, I know, because if, if it was a goddamn Native American burial ground, everybody be that this bitch, won't it? Because everybody got Indian in that blood, don't it? <laughs> if it was a Native American burial ground, would y'all get that bitch memorialized? I just want to know. Y'all, I think y'all fight hard for that shit. <laughs> but when it came from the Africans, y'all ain't fighting for that shit. <laughs> Come walk by this sign. So people can see. So people around the world can see. So people can around... African ancestral burial ground. 
I just I just want to put that up on. I just want to make sure people. Let me let me do it one more time. Cause around the world, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just saying, around the world. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. So, African ancestral burial ground. Peace, peace. This is Brother Maurice, representing slain, struggling, living, and never giving up. Also with the Pan African Revolutionary Socialist Party, PRSP. I'm here today at our, at our beloved African um, burial ground, our ancestors' burial ground. We still have not received a, a memorial on this burial ground yet. I've been participating in this struggle for seven years, since 2000, 2010. Participated with the Diane protest at VCU, spoke at City Hall, and we got it We got it to the point that the parking lot is gone, but there's no memorial here. Where the kiosk at? I've been told that we're going to have Africans in the community that's going to come out here, they can track their bloodline, their DNA, their heritage. We still can't do that. It's 2018 and we still can't do that. So I'm here today with my fellow comrades out here and we, we want to ask, we want to put it on the table to Mayor LeVar Stoney and not only, not only to him, to our community, to our sisters and brothers. They got Y'all got to come out and support this. Everybody up in D.C., everybody want to fight one man Trump, but it's the system. The same system that Trump is, is, is governing D.C. runs right here in the RBA. We need this for our culture. Our children don't have shit that they can gravitate to. That's why I created and developed Slink with other comrades and, and sisters and brothers. You know? But our community needs something to gravitate to. They say do it for the culture. But do this for the culture. Bring bring a memorial, memorialize this burial ground. Oh, you know what I'm saying? We need a memorialization. We got a, we got a Maggie L. Walker statue, right? But before that, we had a Magal Walker house that we can go to and, and look what our, what our ancestor was reading. We can see the books she was reading. Marcus Garvey, W.E.B. Du Bois. We can see the pictures and the people she was working with. Bring this here to this burial ground. That's all I want. That's all I'm going to say today. Greetings. This is Hot Quinn Shaw Court of the August 3rd Collective. New African People's Liberation Army, New African Independence Movement, of the Provisional Government of the Republic of New Africa, Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, George Johnson University, and uh, all the organizations and formations under the Provisional Government of the Republic of New Africa. I'm coming, I'm coming to you live from uh, Gabrielville District of the Provisional Government of the Republic of New Africa. This is our official statement on the controversy over the nine-acre memorial park we want built for our ancestors for the domestic slave trade. So I'm going to just read this statement from the provisional government. It is the New African Independence Movement supports Shaco Bottom, the Gory Island of the United States of America Memorial Park, the hub of the domestic slave trade. The New African Independence Movement supports the memorial park for memorialization of the domestic slave trade of our African ancestors. Being a sacred space where thousands of our ancestors are buried and, and, and being the area where one of our great new African revolutionaries and his comrades were executed at, hung at the gallows with the ropes like so many of our brothers and sisters throughout the South and the U.S. settler government history. Also, this is where the great general is presumed to be buried at. Also on these lands, in the Deep South, we demand that this area be properly memorialized, as it is important to us New Africans and our history, struggle, identity, and nation. Raising monuments also to commemorate the, victim of, of the victims of the domestic slave trade and freedom fighters, activists, sheroes, and heroes are in coordinates with reparations of the United Nations of Human Rights. It's called satisfaction, restoring the dignity, the harm, including monuments, commemorations telling the correct narrative and apologies of the struggle of our ancestors. Free the land. Let me move down. Now this is the brief history of the Richmond, Virginia domestic slave trade. Shaco Bottom has another deep significance as much as any other area, it's where people from many different African cultures, nations were forged into a new nation. 
one bearing a common oppression and a common history of resistance. As the United States approached the end of the 18th century, the hideous system of slavery came under increasing attack. Then the invention of the cotton gin in the mid-1790s renewed the demand for super cheap agri agricultural labor. In 1803, France, deeply shaken by the recent successful slave revolt in its former colony of Haiti, sold its vast holdings in North America to the United States, spurring the development of a huge new plantations in the new deep south. But the new plantation owners soon had a problem. U.S. involvement in the transatlantic slave trade was banned by the bitterly divided Congress in 1807. Virginia slaveholders faced with failing soil and expanding slave population. Since a business opportunity, already the state with the most slaves, Virginia, became a breeder state, where humans were literally grown as cash crop. And one of the biggest markets was located in the Richmond Shaco Bottom. Between 1808 and at the end of the Civil War, some of 300 to 350,000 people of African descent were sold from the valleys of auction houses in the Shaco Valley. By 1865, the black population in the United States numbered about 4 million. That means that millions of African Americans, new Africans today, could trace at least a part of their ancestry to this small piece of estate in Richmond. I say, so in oh a man. sense, Shaco Bottom is the gory island of Senegal of the United States of America. The story is seldom told in Richmond or anywhere else or in entirety until now. This, the reason for this, this statement to LeVar Stoney and this statement to the city of Richmond is, is, is based on uh, the size and the area of the memorial park and what we demanded. What we're demanding is that th this whole Sh Shaco Bottom is, 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 is sacred history. It's a sacred space. It's not just one area like pertaining to the Lumpkins Jail. See, they just want to memorialize the Lumpkins Jail with a museum. But what we're saying is that this whole Shaco Bottom is world history. You see what I'm saying? It's bigger than just local history. This is world history. This is connected back to the motherland. You see what I'm saying? And this is connected to a Holocaust. You see what I'm saying? So they must be memorialized in that way. We're making a connection to the struggle of today. And what that struggle of today is that we still have freedom fighters, ancestors, elders of the same descendants of those same ancestors who were enslaved, who are were political prisoners. Let's get that, you know what I'm saying? Point made is that our ancestors were brought here as political prisoners. We still have political prisoners today of the same ancestry that we're struggling to free today and have connection to this area. Why do we have a connection to this area? Because this is the origin of the black nation. That black nation is the provisional government of the Republic of Africa, which turns 50 years old this year. So this whole connection to this area is based on our nation. It's important for this area to be memorialized under human rights. This is world historical history, this whole area. Yes, welcome back to the K. Kente Show. So you know what this show is about, ladies and gentlemen. The importance of memorializing our ancestors. I'm a big advocate for the memorial park that we're supposed to be getting, you know, built down Chaco Bottom. Now, my two guests that I have in the building with me, Miss Anna Elwes and Brother Hockey Kwali Shakur. I mean, now, first, Miss Anna Elwes, this, this powerful lady right here, and the marbles that y'all see vibes with on the slave trail and different things, Miss Anna Elwes is responsible for these markers. You know, she's been doing a whole lot of work in the community, a whole lot. How you doing, Miss Anna, first of all? <laughs> I'm doing great. I, I just thank you for, for blessing the show, blessing the King God Kente show with your presence. I thank you so much. No, I thank you. This, these opportunities are, are actually what make what we do worthwhile. They just are. Now, Miss Anna, you know, the, the, the thing I want to talk about right now is, you know, and actually you are from California, Los right? Los Angeles. Now, do you have any African in your DNA? <laughs> uh, I, I'm just Miss Anna. I, I just want to be direct. I just because the people like when you be direct. Yeah. I just want to know: Do you have any African 
in your DNA. So there's yes, of course I have. DNA is you know this, this is the building blocks of what we are literally made of, right? So yes, yes literally, my father um, did his his DNA you know test. Uh, in order to reveal that um, there's connections uh, to parts of Cameroon, to mm -hmm. parts of Nigeria, and, and some other stuff as well. And <clears throat> some of you may not know that my mother is actually Norwegian. Her family is Norwegian. So, uh, you know, my DNA, you know, thing comes up pretty 50-50. And let me ask you this. and European. Okay, African and European, that is you indigenous. Do you have any Native American in you? I just... Um, we didn't see very much. Um, it, it might have been a teeny tiny percentage. So, wow. Yeah. And wow. so, you know, what does indigenous mean? Um, indigenous means are you are you native to the place where you're born? Um, and the problem with uh, sort of some of the conversations around this is that indigenous is like a lot of terms is a political term. Mm -hmm. So it's being used in order to you know create a political space mm -hmm. around this conversation, and that's fine because I think that's also an acknowledgement that people don't have knowledge mm -hmm. uh, to feel a particular connection to Africa. Wow. We know we came from there, surely, mm -hmm. um, but what we know is what we have made of ourselves. Here here. And so I think when people are talking about being indigenous, it means that they are trying to honor the fact that their families have spent generations here, exactly. making a life and a culture and a place. And I think that's totally honorable and fine. Um, but I think I think you're right that if it's used in a way to disconnect mm, yes. from you know our African, African yes. you know origins, then I think that's that's a little more of a problem. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Shakur, brother, you back in the building once again. I got to get your take on this. Well, you already know how to take it. <laughs> you know I got African in my blood. I mean, it's no dispute. I love Africa, and you're not going to disconnect me from Africa. I, I, uh, as far as the indigenous thing, you know I done, done many videos about indigenous. I mean, if that's what you want to identify with, kudos. But no one is going to disconnect me from my African ancestors. As a matter of fact, today on this day is the day that Kwame and Kuno transition. So let me decide to chase his ass, but he shaved. But um, I mean, we don't, we don't have the discussions about it. You know, I really don't have too much more to comment on it. You know, but what I'm going to say is like, if you want to know what's in your blood and your DNA, go take the ancestry find test. Go find out. Mm -hmm. And, and that's going to nip everything in the bud <laughs> for me. Yeah, we're going to nip everything in the bud, ladies and gentlemen. Because, I, you know, I, I like to mess with y'all out there because everybody, you know, they, they tell me, you know, man, I'm indigenous, man. I got Native American in me, you know what I'm saying? I ain't African, so I'm like, you know, okay, you know. But me, I know I have African in my DNA. What's up? You know, so we're going to get ready, ladies and gentlemen. What we're going to do, we're going to go to this next video. And we're going to come back with a discussion because we got real hot topics that we're going to discuss that's going on. So let's check this video out. And the question I just have for Mr. Stoney is, I'm an advocate for the African burial ground, the memorial park. And we just was wondering if we going to get something built for our ancestors, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. I know that in the past that we've been, the focus has been on Lumpkin's Jail or Devil's Half Acre, yes. right? And I like the progress we're making there. You know, we got dollars in the budget from the state level that will focus on that, but we got to think bigger than that, right? We got to focus on how we go about memorializing the enslaved Africans who built this city. Yes, sir. And what we have right now, uh, you know, I'm working towards that. I was uh, asked to be a Rose Fellow, only mm -hmm. four mayors around the country. I've used my fellowship to focus exactly on uh, how, we, how we go about memorializing the larger picture. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be Jamestown. Okay. But, you know, we got to, you know, set parameters up on how we go about developing that area, but also doing it in a respectful way that respects our ancestors yes. and the blood that they bled to build this city. Yes, welcome back to the K.I. Kente Show. Man, this show is about the importance of memorializing our ancestors. Now, you know, I'm, I'm born in, you know what I'm saying, from Richmond, home, family members, everybody, you know what I'm saying, I'm originally from here, so... This show right now is, is very special to me because I like to pay homage to my ancestors and, you know, what they did for me and different things. And now with my two guests that I have in the building, this is this is so powerful right now because I don't even think y'all really understand what's going on. I have Miss Anna Ellis in the building like I'm a 
hold the whole paper up again because you got to salute you, Mr. Adler. You know, you know, you, you know, you're doing work in the community, 50 plus. You know, she won't let the history be buried. You know, I have to salute Miss Anna Ellis, though. You know, and her husband Phil were late to us because of, you know, fires went down. The defenders, you know, different things. They've been putting a lot of work in the community, especially for the African burial grounds. Especially for getting our ancestors memorialized. Now, Miss Anna, um, do you think it's going to be soon, or how soon do you think we're going to get some type of <laughs> memorial for our ancestors? Because we were talking earlier about like how New York City, they actually memorialized their ancestors with a memorial park, statues, museum, and different things. That's in New York City, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss Anna, what's your opinion on that? <laughs> so keep in mind that in New York City took 15 to 20 years to get what they got oh, there. Wow. So there's none of this happens quickly. Right? Mm -hmm. So and we have in this community since we got involved, been in, uh, since 2002, 2003, when we actually um, started the campaign to put that marker uh, on Broad Street. Right? But there were people before us who had already been working on things. So certainly the Slave Trail Commission, oh, yes. um, which had gotten started, a Lakeba Folklore Society and their yeah, events yes. uh, to annually promote uh, the, the trail along, uh, the, the uh, trail of enslaved Africans, right? Mm -hmm. um, and before that, there was the small group that wasn't interested in publicity, but helped uh, put the markers up uh, in Spring Park, right up off Lakeside and Northside, uh -huh. which is along Brook Creek, which is the creek where Gabriel and his people organized the rebellion, right? Yes. So people have been doing this work all along, and it, everything uh, has been adding up to creating momentum, mm -hmm. where we are now uh, in a position to be able to share this history in a way that we haven't been able to before. So it's powerful, and the fact that we are, we're sitting on a weird kind of moment right now, where we have all, in various ways, we have worked uh, to elevate this story to such an extent, and to elevate an understanding of the sites that we have, that are our cultural resources, that we are not only trying to claim, but also to protect and then also to develop in a way that will tell the story for the future, right? Yes. So that's the African burial ground. That's also the Lumpkins Jail site. The Nine Acre Memorial Park that we have articulated is really all that we can keep mm -hmm. the, you know, from development in that area mm -hmm. that isn't going to be developed in the way that we think is best to, to claim this history, right? Mm -hmm. So as we are trying to do that, um, it's again, it's been a long time. Yeah. I, I was not gray-haired <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we actually put some old pictures up, actually, you know, right. and that's the wisdom that came in, you know, the wisdom. Yeah, 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 yeah. we, we can call it wisdom, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the truth is, this is how long these things take, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're voices coming up from the community. Yes. Um, amplifying it, learning from people in the community along the way mm. about how they feel about it. And there's no single set of feelings. There's yes. a lot of complicated feelings about this history and these sites. And so the most important thing I think we've always felt we could do was to continue to amplify people's feelings through the newspaper, yes. through the radio show when we had that, uh, through the annual events that happened, but also through collaborating with people. Mm -hmm. um, and then probably the most gratifying thing uh, is to, you know, sort of wake up in the morning and turn on, you know, Facebook or turn on YouTube or, or turn on something and see that other folks, yes. are, you know, have taken this yes. and are running with it and communicating with the people who talk to them, exactly. right? Because this, this is that's the way it happens. So I, in, so to, to, sh to go back to actually answering your question, <laughs> um, I think we are right on the cusp of this thing happening. Mm -hmm. But whenever you are right on the cusp of, say, the city doing what we think they ought to do around this, um, and it starts working its way sort of up the chain or up the ladder, mm -hmm. that's also when the community has to stay the most vigilant, mm -hmm. right? Because we, we get tired, we want to turn it over mm -hmm. to the people that we think have the power to make the decisions, who have the money, but then that means you are turning over the decisions to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the prioritization yeah. to them, right? So this is, you know, this is the moment when we can cheer for how far we have come, yeah. but where the vigilance is incredibly important, and you have to stay on it, or they will, they will take you out of the process. They will take you out um, of uh, of your influence, and we have it all. I mean, that's the, the beautiful thing is is that, that it's because of the community's feelings about this um, that the right is on our side. Yes. Yeah.
and I feel you know too, you know, Miss Anna, when um it, it, it eventually happens, the Memorial Park eventually, it will bring a lot of revenue to Richmond. A whole see people don't really understand this right now because this is the home of the slave trade. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna bring a whole lot of revenue right now. Right. And see that's why I feel like it's my responsibility, my brother Hockey Kwame Shakur responsibility for us, us as younger guys mm -hmm. to get into involved with this. Yeah. I mean because like I said we pay homage to our ancestors but we know how important this is. Like see around the world haven't even got a whiff of really this too much. Mm -hmm. I mean they did but it's not really like I feel like it should be. When we talk about history, when we talk about what's going on, we are overlooked. Richmond, Virginia is overlooked. I feel like that. You know, I mean, we overlooked in everything, but especially the main, I mean, everything. And we got talent, we all that we overlooked. So I feel like the main part of what's our identity is this history, the slave trade of what everything happened. You know, like when y'all go down there and party at, shopping, bottom, well, you know, I feel like our ancestors were shipped and sold off at, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, keeping it real because I know we got a younger generation looking at us. Yeah. So I'm going to let them know, you know, what I'm talking about. That's why right. this is the slave trade, the hub right, right now. Right. So, Brother Shakur, man, I want you just to, you know, add on to that, what you got to say. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> it's just going to happen. You know, one day, I'm patient. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, you know, and I just want to give thanks to my ancestors. I mean, and my elders. Of, of you know the new African independence movement, Black yes. Panther Party, mm -hmm. because they, they, if it wasn't for them, uh, a lot of this history I wouldn't even know about. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm a native of Richmond, I'm a historian junkie, mm -hmm. but they were the ones that told me about Gabriel Prosser. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that got you know uh, the foundation of the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa. The foundation um, was always made in Richmond, Virginia. They always kept that in their whole struggle. They always mentioned Richmond, Virginia. So just off of that alone is what boosted me into the movement. You see what I'm saying? I don't teach them like, you know where you live at? You live in Richmond. That's Gabriel Ross, you know what I'm saying? So, 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 as the old man cut you off, but let's talk about the Republic of New Africa now. Okay. Because this is a, let, let's explain that to people out there when you talk about the Republic of New Africa. Well, yeah, because a lot of people get it confused. They don't, too many people don't know about the history of the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa. March 1968, matter of fact, on my button, this is the 50 year commemoration of the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa. And what that is, is, um, let me just break it down simple and fast. Uh, uh, you know, they were comrades, like I always tell you, they were, they were comrades of Malcolm X, the Malcolm X Society, which were the Obadelli brothers. Along with Queen Mother Moore, a lot of people don't know who she is. Mm -hmm. but Queen Mother Moore, Robert F. Williams, Daddy Shabazz, and over 500 black nationalist activists from all across the United States of America all descended on Detroit in March 1968. So when they got there, they signed what we call the Declaration of Independence of the Republic of New Africa. Mm -hmm. And Queen Mother Moore was the first signer of that document mm -hmm. that we are a nation. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people yeah. don't understand that. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. We come from several different many nations. You see what I'm saying? Because yes. of what happened to our ancestors, mm -hmm. which you all know what happened to our ancestors with the slave trade. So out of that um, struggle, a lot of this history has been suppressed as far as like our ancestors who rose up against slavery. Mm -hmm. So that's our foundation. That's the foundation of this nation. And, uh, and being a new African and a new African nationality is the ancestors who fought back. You see what I'm saying? So all those were Turner, Gabriel, yeah, Matt Turner, Gabriel, Dan Marvesi, mm -hmm. uh, the Dismal Swamp Maroons, mm -hmm. all those, it, it was a struggle waged ever since our ancestors were well, coming on the boat. Mm -hmm. They were waging the struggle for independence. See, a lot of people don't understand that a lot of our ancestors never wanted to be a part of the United States government. So this is where the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa come from. We continue that struggle of independence. You know, and a lot of people, let me just clear this up, a lot of people want to label us separatists. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But that is a misconcepted term to label us separatists. What Malcolm X was saying is that all our people have a human right 
to independence. You see what I'm saying? No matter where you are, whether it's your community, you see what I'm saying? What so, is, what's you, whether it's like voting, you can be Yeah, straight. voting. Yep. See, a lot of people read that. <laughs> you know, they, a lot of people read that out of the struggle. Like, they think we anti-vote. No, that's a part of our struggle. Anything dealing with self-determination, that's what the provisional government of public New Africa is for. That's what we organize under. We, un we organize for all that. You see what I'm saying? But our yeah. basis is independence, land, reparations. You see what I'm saying? So we be standing on a lot of shoulders of great ancestors that come from that struggle. They freedom fighters. Yes. Like our political prisoners. You know what I'm saying? Like Matulu and all of them. They carried on that struggle of our ancestors. You see and what I'm saying? I can say, bro, you, you are one of those brothers that are truly, truly for political prisoners. Man. Mm -hmm. They know uh, political prisoners, free political prisoners. Man. Man. For I mean, man. You, you are definitely an ambassador for them brothers, and I have to salute you for that. Thank you. You know, right now. Thank you. On the show. Thank you, bro. You know, now Miss Anna, um, this 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 cover of the you know fifty plus paper. You know, I just want to you know get your opinion on what you you know what you think about this paper. Cause like I said, to me, it was a great article and different things up in here. You know, I, I, I really think so. You know, cause it was explaining about you know yes. when when you started. You know, far as the organization, far as with yeah. the um, slave trade. You know, mm -hmm. markers and different things. So, yeah. what did you think about it, though, Miss Anna? So. <laughs> well, so like I said, overall, I think it's a really good article, and it's it's I'm finding it's helpful because mm -hmm. there are people who you know heard of our work and heard yeah. of the burial ground things, but have not really understood sort of the history of how it all came about. Mm -hmm. So things like this are very useful in that regard. You know, like I said, I had issue with some factual errors okay. that are in there, so they give me credit for things all by myself that I, you know definitely. Is not I want to give credit to, right. like you said, yeah, I want to yeah, give credit yeah. to the yes. Left Vote Folks oh, Society, Society, the Absolutely. Slave Trail Commission. I want yeah. everybody that's been playing a part that's right. trying to get our ancestors memorialized. Right. You know, I, I want to sue everybody that's right. doing it right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it, so it's really a matter of um, over the course of this, you know, 15, 16 years of doing this work, we have worked with people. We have not always agreed sometimes on tactics or mm -hmm. strategy, but in the end, we are all working to to ensure that this history is preserved and protected for the future. So that means we're working both around the physical site, mm -hmm. um, our knowledge building, but it's also about process. It's also about how these decisions get dealt with, how exactly. they're handled, who's involved in those processes. Um, there's a couple, there's a lot of things going on in Richmond that really are tied together. Mm -hmm. So when I think about the Sacred Ground Project yes. and it, its relationship to those things, so we've been centered on the struggle to reclaim the African burial ground mm -hmm. and now on the development of this memorial park, right? Okay. At the same time, you have the East Marshall Street Well Project going on, which is focused on the history of the advancement of medical studies through anatomical studies on black bodies. Oh, wow. Okay? okay. So that's going well, on. Well, that's information. Have, ah, this is this stuff. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the same time, you've got the people who are working on a more contemporary mm -hmm. uh, 19th and 20th century cemeteries okay. in mm -hmm. East End and Evergreen, right? Yeah. The places where Maggie Walker is buried. Yeah, father, and yet, yeah. you know, these uh, there, there's not been care mm -hmm. there until the last maybe 20 years, 15 to 20 wow. years. So all this is going on right now. Exactly. So there's a lot of work that's yes, going on sure. that is reclaiming our history. There's somebody else, and this is a retired white man who moved here and started doing history walking tours um, just because oh, he likes to walk okay. and, and came across the second African burial ground, oh, which wow. is the one that's up on uh, up near to Shaco Hill Cemetery mm -hmm. in the old Hebrew Cemetery, right? Oh, so wow. Richmond is busting out all over yeah. with, with reconnecting uh, with these histories, making them public, and beginning to really put together a landscape of black history uh, in Richmond that is helping us understand you know, where we came from, how we get to be uh, where we are now, and how it rolls into the decisions we're going to be making, you know, going forward. Um, the, I'm going to, I'm going to, the one thing I do want to clarify in okay. here, it doesn't have to do with me, but it's a position that we have, is that somewhere in the late 19th century, somebody started referring to Gabriel as Gabriel Process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm telling you, every time I see it, I'm going to scratch it out. It's because Gabriel. Prosser was the name of the man who owned him, mm -hmm. right? That, that family, was his name, right? It was his, but it was never his name. That was, that I say was that the that slave, was master slave, master slave master master name. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and never did he, Gabriel use it. Yeah, no, yeah, never yeah. did they use yeah, it for did. him. Mm -hmm. The 
only time that name was associated with Gabriel was in the possessive. Yeah. It was when they would say Prosser's Gabriel yeah, yeah. in order to refer to him and who owned him. And that was during the legal proceedings, yeah. right? Or in the conference. But never, ever did Gabriel use that name. Ever. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm glad you brought that up. That's, 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 that's some that's information that's right there. Yeah, that's real good. And yeah. it's something I want to clarify because I'm glad yeah. she brought it up. Yeah. Because I talked because I think it was Phil. Yeah. It I'm might have sure been Phil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phil, I think Phil has seen um, something I had posted. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I use you know I use Gary Brown Boston. Sure. But um people do. Far, let me cl- let me make this clarification. Far from the provisional government of public New Africa stand. Yeah. The only reason we use the whole name, we know he never used those terms. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We know he never used that name or on that level. The only reason we use it is because of the information to find about him. Cause you know you're not gonna if you put in Gabriel right. you know, across, you know what I'm saying? It's not gonna angel. pop up. Yeah, it's gonna pop up as Archangel. Yeah, Archangel, uh, Angel. Yeah. So we, the only reason we use it, we don't we don't call him that. You know what I'm saying? We use just Gabriel like they do. But the only reason we use Gabriel Process is because the youth and everybody when we mention him, because you know a lot of people don't still don't know about Gabriel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So. New African Independence Movement, the only reason we say Gabriel Prosser is to get people to research him because we know it's going to pop up. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because you know how you got it. How yeah. it's set up. It's set up. That's what you know what I'm saying? So I, we just use that as a strategy. You see what I'm saying? Sure. Along with calling it, you know, like recently, we certified this district as Gabriel Prosser District under the, the government of Republican New Africa. So we only use it just to get people to research him, to get his history, because we know it's going to pop straight up. Because I get that question a lot. Because like, when people see me post it, they be like, why are you using Gabriel Prosser? I, I have to always yeah. break it down to them. Like, we I'm not having this Anna. I'm yeah. going to clarify. I'm glad you clarified. You know, yeah. Especially yeah. with that, that information right there, yeah. a lot of people really didn't know. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't know. Yeah, yeah you know, it's important to understand that. Because we, have, we tend to want to lump a lot of things together. Like, mm-hmm. I want to say, we all got our names from our slave owners. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Yes, that's also yep. true, but it's not always true. And something else true. that is really interesting that I learned about the Civil War is that after the Civil War, as Africans were becoming free, mm-hmm. and especially also during the, uh, as they were self-emancipating during the war, uh-huh. and men were enlisting in the, in the U.S. Army, they were finding new names for themselves. Oh, yes, that's true. See, they're claiming yeah. identities and saying, I'm going to dis- disconnect from that. Yeah, they sure and I'm going to give yeah. myself a new name. Wow. And interestingly enough, at that time, well, it's, not, it's part of the whole culture, right? Mm-hmm. Is that they looked to historic names that represented liberty and independence. Oh, yeah. All right, so hold on. There are so many Washingtons, Jeffersons, Browns. right? Yeah. All the names that are associated with the American Revolution True. are names that that black soldiers or and, and black people claimed in that time Patrick to Henry. identify themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Right? So yeah. you've got people whose last name is Henry, you've got people whose last you know, all these names you're gonna find, but you know, mostly you see, you see a lot of Washingtons, right? Yeah. A lot of Jeffersons, a lot of that. Yeah. So and understanding that there's an, that there was an understanding that they were trying to claim mm-hmm. what they believe was their part of this place, because okay. this is the place where they live. Oh, right? Okay. And so you know, we can't go back and just diss people for saying, why would you take a slave owner? Exactly. Right? <laughs> when, when at exactly. that time, as I'm claiming my identity, I'm going to take on a name that everybody understands represents the struggle for liberty. True. Right? True. So, that's that's awesome. part of the mix. And that's part of what I like to do. Is I like to make it complicated. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to simplify anything. Yeah. Now, yeah. now Ms. Anna, what, I, I, what I want to ask you about, too, what, what made you get into wanting to know, you know, more about your family lineage and your, yeah, your, sure. your, your DNA and different things? What made yeah. you want to know that you, you know, you had African in your blood and you had... All right, so, first of all, I was never confused. I, oh, okay. I mean, some people still confused. <laughs> I've never been confused on that score, and I, frankly, I find it astounding that anyone is confused on yeah, that score. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the truth is, um, so I came here in 1988. So I was um, a 28-year-old young mother, or well, about to be a mother. Anyway, I mm-hmm. came to Richmond, um, and my family at that time were all in Los Angeles primarily, and had spent um, 
part of that uh, migration, right, uh, mm -hmm. out of the South in the yeah. uh, during the 20th century. Part of there's that book, The Warmth of Other yeah. Suns, right? Yeah. So our so, people yeah. were of those who migrated to Los Angeles, exactly. And by mm -hmm. it took until about 1962 for them all to be there. So then I grew up in Los Angeles, and then I go to New York, and then I end up meeting a guy and marrying him. He's from Virginia. I come to Virginia, oh, and my whole family okay. is like. We don't understand. <laughs> it took us a long time to get out and yeah. you go back. So, but the second piece of information was mm. we know that one of your ancestor grandmothers was sold out of Richmond. Mm. So that gave me a connection um, that at first I just thought was interesting history. Mm -hmm. um, but later, um, it, you know, I was here in '88 and I got started getting active in 2002. Um, it's at that point, as we were starting to work on the Shaco Bottom, and people were saying, well, in the Defenders, you're gonna, you need to be that spokesperson. Oh, really? And I said, well, I don't feel like I have the right. I just got here. You know, I'm five yeah. years here. What am I, come here? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm come here. I'm not from here. Right? Yeah, and so, you know, and but, but as somebody pointed out to me, he said, no, 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 your ancestor grandmother is from here. Right. You're of those. You're of the people who were here wow. and got sold south, right, and deeper south, deeper and south. then part of the migration, you know, over time um, that our people took. Exactly. And so I said, okay, on that score, I claim my right to Richmond, okay. and therefore I claim my right to speak on this issue. Okay. Um, and that really, so that and the principle that you were just talking about mm -hmm. flipped my switch. Okay. And that principle was understanding that the right of oppressed peoples to self-determination in the face of their oppressor mm -hmm. helped me understand that I could be in any room and understand the power dynamics and what was going on. Exactly. It makes it possible for me to understand what I'm dealing with when we deal with opposition down there, but also mm -hmm. reluctance. So people will focus on because I can hear it, you're explaining the same confusion that people have with this this principle, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the right of right of self determination yes. in the face of the oppressor, right? Exactly. The emphasis is on the word right. Yes. The self determination is the second part. The emphasis is on the word right. I have the right to claim my place. I have the right to say I want to be independent. Exactly. I have the right to say that I'm going to be dealt with in this way exactly. with the people who are in power, right? Exactly. It is not saying I want to be separate. Mm -hmm. I exactly. want to be. It's not saying that. It's saying, in essence, I'm claiming exactly the same right that every other exactly. citizen of this country claims. You know, that we were not allowed to have. We were not allowed to have right. We were not allowed to look Mm -hmm. A white person in the eye. Exactly. If you even did the, everything else, you did was perfect, and then the last thing that you did was to raise your eyes and make eye contact with somebody white. Exactly. That was considered an affront that you could be lynched for. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. what we are saying is that you take it back. Yeah. I am saying that in and of myself, in this place, I have the right mm -hmm. to determine my relationship to all of that. Exactly. I choose to be here. Yep. You have people who are now saying they're indigenous. I yep. choose to be American because this is what I know for mm -hmm. 400 years. Exactly. They can choose that. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Right? Exactly. But they're not then saying that means I throw everything else away. I don't want to be here. I'm not invested. Mm -hmm. I am. We are. I just feel like when people say it about the indigenous, I feel like they kind of diss, you know, they diss Africa. That, that's, right. that's that's my, my right. thing. It's like right. it's in a way. It's cool that you know you do have Native right. Native American in you, but why are you dissing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know the motherland. Yeah. That's yeah. what I really yeah. don't support that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't support well, that at all. Yeah. So I, I'll just say that I have been to Africa, and mm -hmm. I mean, and not broadly. I've been specifically to Mali. Okay. I spent 24 hours in uh, Dakar, and I went to the Gore Island to see the house oh, of yes. you know slaves right. in the door of no return. Right. Um, and we have a lot to do to reconnect with Africa. We do. Yep. Um, and part of that can be with people who, who have come more recently from Africa to exactly. try and get an understanding. But also understanding that they don't always know the older history either. Yeah. Yeah. They had a very particular experience through colonialism yes. that we don't understand over here. Exactly. Right? The last time we worked to understand that was when we were helping with the anti-apartheid struggles in the 60s yep. and 70s. Right? Um, so yeah, there's some reconnecting that we need to do in order to understand 
and reality of our relationship and our connection. Exactly. Now, what I, I would want to, you know, ask Miss Anna, what would you say to the younger generation out there that, that you know, far as that's not aware about their history, mm -hmm. you know, that, that really that's from Richmond, Virginia, that might don't even know about the, the slave trade that happened, about having the Africans on the ship and sold here, that this was one of the largest mm -hmm. clubs. Mm -hmm. What would you, you know, you say to some of the younger people out there that probably should get involved with because we need every voice, mm -hmm. every voice. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm all about education and the history gets me, um, the history motivates me, empowers me, makes me feel yeah. like so I can tell who's a hockey player. He's like the same way. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's like giving me power, right? It's like, so, you know, right? so I was, for, for young people, I would say a lot of times what's happening is they got so many questions and they don't know where to start, right? So I would say start with one question, one single thing that you are curious about that you don't really know the answer to and you want to know the answer to. And honest to God, literally, you could call your local library mm -hmm. and say, can you direct me to a movie yeah. about this? Can you direct me to, you know, a book about this? Mm -hmm. um, or can you direct me to just to somebody in the community who can, you know, who can, we can just have a conversation yes. about it, just to get it started. Don't worry about knowing all of it, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's a lot to know. And, you know, maybe it's something to do with what you already are involved in. If it's music that you're exactly. already involved in, you know, connect with that. The, we have this guy who comes, uh, Sheikh Hamala Debate. He is from Mali, but he's now based in D.C. He uh -huh. comes to Richmond to the Folk Festival, oh, right? Yeah. And I think some, it's, it's an international music festival. Yeah. He comes there and he will play his guitar with bluegrass musicians, with blues musicians, and he's playing Mali and guitar. Oh. And in that space, you get to hear the connections. Oh, man. Okay? The yeah. way it is centered and the way that it is dispersed out into the peoples of the world. Exactly. So that you can claim your piece of it by hearing, you know, the connections, right? And so if it's food, shoot, do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Do it through the food. You know where hush puppies come from? <laughs> Mm -hmm. hush pup we know what hush puppies are, right? Hush puppies come from West Africa. Sure. They are originally made from ground um, black eyed peas. Yeah. We all understand black eyed peas. Mm -hmm. We know what they're for, we know where they're from, right? Yeah. We celebrate those black eyed peas on New Year's Eve, right? Yeah. New Year's yeah. Day, yeah. right? So, yeah. so there you go. You're already connected, right? Already. And, and the relationship to Native Americans. Mm -hmm. um, that is something to not take lightly. Nah. Mm -hmm. nah. Whether you actually have it or not, you know, find out. True. And be clear. I mean, well, you know, with my girl, well, she's clear. Cherokee, but that's what you know they say. So I, I don't yeah, know right. if it's really exactly. true, but she, yeah. she, that's what she, if she told me. She claims it. I mean, you know, so you know. Right. But, she, but understand <laughs> what, what it means yeah, for you yeah. for real. Yeah. And then don't leave it in the 19th century. Exactly. You have you have Native people around you right now yep. mm -hmm. with a history that that people in Virginia messed up. Yeah, they did. Complicated, yeah, they did. right? Yeah. But also, we had a complicated history from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I think what all of us want is to be acknowledged and dealt with on a real basis. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to leave Native American people in mm -hmm. this realm of fantasy or nostalgia or yeah. history anymore. Yeah, yeah. Then we want to have that relationship with our African history, exactly. right? Yes. Um, and so that's going to take knowledge building about what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. That's going to take linking up with the struggles. So yeah. one of the struggles that you know is happening right now that Native Americans are taking the lead on, right, is water rights. Yes. Okay. Yes. The pipeline and yeah. those kind of things that we think maybe you know no big deal because it's not yeah. right here, but it is in Virginia and it is in the middle, you know, Midwest of the country. Yeah, they're trying to take And that those people, the Native people who were there, who were fighting to keep water clean, mm -hmm. you know, there, those are people who got moved from here. They were in North Carolina. They were in Virginia. Mm -hmm. The Cherokee that we're talking about were people who were here, yeah, they were here. you know, and got moved. Some of them went north. They dispersed. This is a big, also a big history. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to claim these things, then yeah. we should understand these things exactly. and then find a real relationship to them. Yes. I just want to thank you, Miss Anna Ellis, for coming on the Kate I Can't Say show. Once again, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed this. I hope a lot of y'all enjoyed her. I hope a lot of y'all enjoyed my brother, Hockey, yeah. Bobby yeah. Shakur. Thank you, Bobby. I mean, this was, a, this was a powerful show. I hope a lot of things got clarified up. I hope y'all understand the importance of memorializing y'all ancestors that 
Y'all all from Richmond, Virginia. So when y'all go down and party with Chaco Bottle, and you know y'all give me a little energy, y'all just think about y'all ancestors, man, because, yeah. you know, yeah, pull a little, you know, pull a little look out for them. Like Anna said, pull a little look out for them. Pull a little look out for Yes, man. <laughs> yeah, it's paid homage to your ancestors. So let's go on to this commercial for me in the show. There are some people in the world that would never support you because they're afraid of what you might become. They see your potential. They see your outcome before it happens. They Ain't know no you great. They smile in your face. No time they want to take your place. It's bad luck on you. The dirt on your name. Hate me now like Diddy and Nas. I'm born a king like Tootin' Comet. They throwing rocks at the castle, but I can't even knock. Like gold and shining, like diamonds and shining. They got their hate, so I just school them and give them assignments. I don't for the poverty people. We are in poverty. We got a lot of social media revolutioners. You don't see these niggas out here doing that? Because y'all niggas don't got else. So that's another thing. Y'all don't even know how to do shit. A lot of our ancestors never wanted to be a part of the United States government. So this is where the provisional government of Portland, New Africa come from. We continue that struggle of independence. Hold the whole paper up again, because you know I got a solution, Mr. Adler, you know, you know, because you, you know you're doing work in the community, 50 plus, you know, she won't let the history be buried. Because we were talking earlier about like how New York City, they actually memorialized their ancestors with a memorial park, statues, museum, and different things. That's the Nine Acre Memorial Park that we have articulated is really all that we can keep that, you know, from development in that area that isn't going to be developed in a way that we think is best to, to claim this history. Right? It's because of the community's feelings about this um, that the right is on our side. Right? Yes. And I feel, though, too, you know, Miss Anna, when um, it, it, it eventually happens, the Memorial Park, it will bring a lot of revenue to Richmond. A whole, see, people don't really understand this right now because this is the home of the slave trade. I just want to know, do you have any African in your DNA? So, there's, yes, of course I have. You know, there's connections uh, to parts of Cameroon, to mm. parts of Nigeria. My mother is actually Norwegian. Her family's Norwegian. So. That is you indigenous. Do you have any Native American in you? It might have been wow. a teeny tiny percentage. Wow. So, indigenous is like a lot of terms, it's a political term. So I think when people are talking about being indigenous, it means that they're trying to honor the fact that their families have spent generations here. I think that's totally honorable and fine. Um, but I think I think you're right that if it's used in a way to disconnect yes. from you know our African, African yes. you know origins, then I think that's that's a little more of a problem. Yeah, that's what made yeah. you want to know that you you know you had African in your blood and you had. Right. So first of all, I was never confused. I, oh, oh, I mean, because some people still confused. I, 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 I mean, the slave mentality, identity crisis, comedy scene. Your name is Tony Brown, man. We don't know Kuta Kente. If you don't have that, that album, please get it. Um, it's a funny, <laughs> it's, I'm thinking about a skit now. Well, I don't know how to take this guy. You know, one minute he's running around with a slave. <laughs> Associate, like they really think you uh, a glasses VA or, or going with scaling. They think that's actually that's that's you. Yeah. No, that's literally you. But how, how does it's not me? Yeah, it's not me. It's not me. That's that's not me. And um, I just want to end this show just saying thank these powerful guests right now once again. Thank you. And like I said, Miss Evans, you you know I, I pay homage to you. You've been doing. You read Mr. Phil Lato. Yes, sir. You know y'all been doing a, a whole lot of things in the community as far as we're helping getting our ancestors memorialized. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, like I said, I feel like it's, it's my duty as a you know a youth because I do have a platform and I want to you know and I do comedy, I do skits, but I want to show my platform a variety of different things and I want to show my platform what really what Richmond is really about. Mm -hmm. 
And um, shout out to the brothers that's down in the city right now, man. I just want to shout out to y'all because I know y'all look at the shows too. And like I said, there's a lot of smart brothers still in there too. Mm -hmm. That's that's going, that's up on the knowledge and different things. So I just want to salute y'all. Mm -hmm. Make sure y'all check out the Kid I Can Say show next week. Y'all never know what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> y'all see who we had in the building. Miss Anna Ellis and the brother Hockey Quality Shakur. Thank y'all for tuning in.